Hello, range degradation has always been something that's interested me. Um, one of my most successful videos I did 18 months ago, and it was on that subject. At the time, uh, I had lost six miles and had driven 7,700 miles. And, uh, and that had worked out at 2.28%. Now, I thought I would do an update because now I've done 14,000 miles, more, a total of 21,000 miles, just to see how it compares. Hello, my name is Nigel. Thank you very much for joining me today and hope you can subscribe and like if you haven't done already. So I thought it might be a good idea to go back to the original video to see where we were then, and then we can then come up to date uh, now, 14,000 miles later in my Tesla Model 3. Hello, thanks very much for joining. I'm not going to charge my Tesla LFP battery to 100% anymore, and I'm going to tell you why. Well, it all started a few days ago after my last post, and it was about range degradation. Uh, and I'd noticed I'd lost six miles since I'd had the car in the maximum range when I char charged to 100%. Uh, and I worked this out, I'd done 7,700 miles. So for every 1,283 miles I did, I'd lost one mile of range. And that worked out at 2.281%. So I went straight to the manual of, of the Tesla to see what it says. And I remember reading this when I first had the car. And it says that if your car is equipped with an LFP battery, and there's a very easy way to check if it is or not. Tesla recommends that 100% for daily use and that you also fully charge your vehicle to 100% at least once per week. So that's what I've been doing for all that time, including supercharges or wherever I go. I've charged to 100%. So I took a look to see what Tesla has to say on its websites. And it said that a Tesla after 200,000 miles should retain 90% of its original battery. And after 20,000 miles, it should only lose 1%. But clearly I had lost 2.28% uh, in only 7,700 miles uh, and not the 1% Tesla was saying in 20,000 miles. So I needed to do a lot more research on this because this was concerning because I was achieving well below what Tesla said I should do. I love the program Fully Charge and the, the following clip is uh, Rob Llewellyn and Quentin Wilson just talking about what Tesla's potentially can do. It's a great channel. If you're not subscribed, you really should be. It's excellent. So just take a quick look. We now know that um, there are testers out there that do a million miles, a million miles yeah. and, and there was a, a guy with a, a YouTube of Model 3 uh, who'd done 200,000 miles and his degradation on his battery was 8%. Right, after 200,000 miles. Yeah, and he charged on superchargers only. Right. So, so since that video, I've done a further 13,000 miles, so I've now done 21,000 miles and my car has degraded a further nine miles in total, 15 miles since new. That's 5.7%. So on a graph, it is leveling out. It starts out fairly high, it goes down and it's beginning to level out. But it's probably still higher than I think I would like. Um, I mean, Tesla say 1% after 20,000 miles. I'm at 5.7% after 21,000 miles. Now, please leave a comment below what your degradation is. I have had people saying I'm doing it the wrong way, that it's not lineal or lateral, but I'm basing my degradation on what the uh, the car was when I first had it, which was 263. That was the maximum range, and now it charges up to 248. That's what I'm basing it on. Now, I'm told there is some software you can get, um, which I haven't done. So I'm purely basing it on what it shows on the screen when I'm fully charged. This is what I do now. I do charge at home once a week, at least once a week to 100%. Now, although Tesla are saying you should charge to 100%, uh, as anyone with a Tesla knows, when you get to a supercharger, it tells you when you've got enough charge to either your destination, to get to your destination, 
or to get to the next supercharger. And so it is encouraging you to stop charging. Now, it could well be that one of the reasons is that he doesn't want queues at superchargers and it knows that you can take twice as long filling the last few miles to 100% than if you finish at 80 or 90%. And so it can get more people through the superchargers. So I tend to go a little bit higher than when Tesla says you've got enough charge for your destination or the next supercharger just in case there could be a diversion or something like that my margin of error was much more when i drove to portugal and spain because i was on strange roads and i really didn't want to run out of charge um, some of the chargers were sort of 80 90 miles apart some were probably 140 150 now i've got a range of about 210 in my car driving on auto routes 75 miles an hour legal is not great for the consumption. So I did go to 90, 100% quite a bit of the time. Also, we came up to Scotland quite a few times from Cornwall and on one occasion, it got to minus 10 at Aviemore. And there I wasn't sure what it would do actually to the range. So I did actually go to 100%. And all the times I went to 100%, nobody was ever waiting in Portugal. It was lucky to see anyone else charging. It would have been nice to have a, a conversation, as if they spoke English, um, but that was never the case. So I've never kept anybody waiting. And often I'm charging in the early hours of the morning. Current 5.7% um, degradation. Let me know what your numbers are, please. And that would be, I find that very interesting. Uh, but having said that, so, um, it means that for every 1,405 miles, I lose a mile of range. Earlier on, it was 1,283. So the numbers are getting better and I'm not too concerned because based on the uh, 15 miles that I have lost in 21,000 miles that I've driven, that would still give me a life of over half a million miles if it continued at that rate, but we know from the graph that it goes down and levels out. And I think the car's gonna last a lot longer <laughs> than I will. So please let me know what you think. I hope you can like and subscribe. People often tell me all the things that are wrong with Tesla. Well, uh, it's interesting, all the negative vibes do come from people that don't have them. And, and of course the oil industry, uh, the legacy auto makers, and a lot of negative vibes about Tesla. Uh, this is not a negative. I love the Tesla, I'd buy it again. Just going into some of the details of what the range was when I first had it to what it is now, but that really isn't an issue. I've not spent anything on the car or minimal. I had a ding, which I got repaired, my fault, 500 pounds. Insurance is reasonable might be coming up to the tyres being replacing. I'll check those soon. And um, I would thoroughly recommend you buy a Tesla or an electric vehicle, depending on your needs. Obviously the Tesla comes into its own driving uh, long distances throughout your country. It makes it so easy. And uh, the screen is, is excellent. If you're not going such longer distances, you might not need uh, such an expensive car, uh, maybe uh, an MG, a Citroen, um, all types of uh, cheaper EVs are available. But anyway, hope you find this interesting and uh, mind how you go, drive safely and don't forget to take your coffee cup, reusable, wherever you go. Thanks a lot. Bye.